day just with um, wedges and putter and, and walked all 18 holes and just hit chips and putts around the greens, but actually played the golf course today uh, in its entirety, and it's, um, it's everything that I'd, I'd heard about. It's a, it's a tough test. That's great. All right, guys, we'll open it up for questions. Hey, Justin. DJ Backspin, WLGZ HD2, the B1055, Rochester, New York. Um, I want to ask you, what music do you listen to to get you inspired and in, in the mood to play a major? Uh, I'm a big hip-hop guy. I mean, I like to listen to a lot of rap, so it's it's... I love music, and I think what's unique about it is you can kind of listen to different genres to get you in different moods. Um, I mean, stuff that I'm going to listen to to maybe get in a zone or while I'm working out isn't necessarily the same thing I'm going to listen to drinking beer on a boat out on the lake or something. So it's very unique in that sense. It would definitely be some kind of hip-hop rap to, um, you know, kind of make me almost feel like I have blinders on and no one else is there. Thank you. Hey, Justin. Over here. Um, I know you said recently that you feel you haven't been you've been playing your worst rounds possible. I think was one of your quotes. You're not getting the best out of it. Why do you think this is? Where where do you think the problems have arose in the last whatever it's been? Whatever, however you think you've been playing like this. Uh, well, I felt like I showed a lot of, of really good signs at, in Charlotte. Um, you know, I think Saturday was a great example. It just was it was a round where I didn't really have very much. I felt like, I, you know, I left a couple shots out there putting-wise and, and just wasn't sharp. You know, I was hitting a lot of very poor wedges and irons. And, and you know, I birdied two of the last four holes and salvaged an under-par round on a tough golf course. And I and Bones and I kind of said on 18 green, we're like, this is, this is the stuff that we haven't been doing this year. You know, I felt like that that 70 that I shot that day or the rounds that I've been shooting 73 and 74, um, which then gave me an opportunity to, you know, play myself into contention with nine holes left, whereas I wouldn't have been that way beforehand. So I, I feel like um, it was way more so beforehand. It just wasn't scoring properly. You know, it was, wasn't was making that putt to keep or get some momentum or wasn't hitting, you know, wedge wedges in there close, making those two, three, four birdies in a row. Um, but like I said, I felt like in Charlotte, I really, uh, you know, like turned a little bit of a corner of, of seeing more of scoring better. We'll go to Jeff on seven. As, as you look at last year's victory, uh, it's pretty well documented. You weren't real happy Saturday night. What, what was the biggest key in getting things turned around for you? I think the, the biggest thing for me was, was honestly just getting it out of my system Saturday before I left the golf course. And I think that was something Bones did a great job with. It wasn't, um, I mean, y'all know it was cold that Saturday. Like, it was late in the day. It, it, was, it was not, I wasn't necessarily going to go have, like, an unbelievable practice session just with the conditions and, and weather and everything. But it was more just, like, I couldn't leave the property or the golf course in that frame of mind. It just wasn't, uh, it's not healthy. And uh, whether it was I'm trying to win the golf tournament or, or shoot a couple under and finish third or fourth, whatever it is, it's just... I needed to be leaving on a lot more positive note and, and almost just go down there and just vent and just kind of get it out of me. And, and you know, that's just kind of when Bones told me, you know, we're doing a lot of great things, playing some really, really good golf, and you're still a great player. So let's not let one round, you know, change that. And, um, and yeah, it worked out well. Next we'll go 16, followed by Mike 11. Uh, Justin, um, regarding the golf course, there's a lot of really, really tight turf around some of the greens. Mm -hmm. Do you know yet what you'll be doing, putting, chipping? Is that something you might even lead to an adjustment in the bag? Uh, I won't change anything that, uh, uh, that I would normally use. I mean, I, I generally travel with two different 60 degrees, uh, one T grind, one K grind, and it's just is basically based on the turf, and I feel like a T is just going to – it's just better to chip off of, which is what I use 85% of the time anyway. But a lot of it is very situational around the greens. I mean, it, it's kind of unique because a lot of the runoffs behind the greens and side of the greens, they don't really run off to the fairway. They run off to the rough, um, and they run off to the first cut unless you're flying it on the flat areas, which you hopefully wouldn't be doing in, you know, in those situations. So, you know, it's one of those – one of those weeks where I think you'll be out watching people hitting chips and, and shots around the greens, and they're going to be maybe hitting shots from fairways around the greens when the balls aren't really going to stay there. And I think it's just one of those things you, you adjust. You know, all of us are 
gamers enough to where we, you know, we assess the lie, and then from there we the pin, the wind, and go from there. But you definitely have an option of a, a wide variety of shots around the greens. Justin, you said uh, it was everything you had heard. So what had you heard about Oak Hill? And since it's been 10 years since the tournament's been here with so many younger guys on the tour, how does that impact an event of a course that a lot of you had never played before? Yeah, I, it's very similar to, to Southern Hills uh, last year. You know, everyone's like, oh, I haven't played since the redo. And I'm like, well, I've never played, period. So it's, uh, it's kind of nice for me in that sense. I'm sure some of the holes are similar for the guys that have played it, but you know, people are, that are trying to learn the, the redesign, um, you know, I'm trying to learn the golf course. So it's, I think a lot of people are in very similar uh, circumstance, but um, it, just what I'd heard about the course is that it's, I mean, it's a tough golf course. It's, it's, you know, Northeast, it's got the, I love the way the courses look up here, just how the, the definition of the fairway to the rough and the, and the cutting of the bunkers. And I, and I love the, the square, the kind of sharp edges on the greens. Um, this place reminds me a little bit of a wing foot, just in terms of the, the green comp, not the severity of the greens are not like wing foot, nothing is, but just the kind of the designs of them and, and some of the pin locations and how the fairways kind of canter and against the slopes or whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good golf course. And the rough itself, it looks like it's going to thicken up even more. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's the thickest blades of grass. It's almost like um, what's it like the Saint Augustine or something? It, it's just it's it's very very thick. I felt like I have a lot of lies, chipping and putting that I felt like I or sorry chipping and hitting irons that I had a pretty good idea how it was going to come out and I didn't. So I think that's going to be something that a lot of people will have to guess correctly or adjust to as the week goes on. Mike too. Um, trees seem to engender strong opinions in people. Um, how do you feel about just kind of old school tree line golf courses? What impact do you think they'll have this week? And then especially recoveries with the thick rough. I like it. I mean, I, I love old school golf courses. I think it, they can create a lot of definition to holes. Um, it just seems like nowadays you can't really please anybody. You know, it's like, oh, if it's tree lined, oh, they can't get away from the old school, but then take the trees away. Oh, it's a bomber's paradise. You hit it wherever you want. It's too, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's hard to, I guess, please everybody in that aspect, but it is very tough. I mean, Max today on, I played with Max that par five on the front, I think number four, you know, he had a just barely pulled a drive. It wasn't a bad drive by any means, just through the fairway. And on a par five, he'd just be hitting a five or six iron down there, but he had those trees on the left in his way. So then he's got to navigate those. And that's just a part of it. You know, there's going to be holes you need to play on one side or the other. And, um, and just kind of be smart when you get in trouble and not, you know, turn bogeys or pars into doubles and triples. Mike Ford? Justin, I've talked to a, a couple of pros who, who wonder how a course this far northeast would play this early in the year. Grasses aren't quite mature, and maybe mm -hmm. as it might be in other places. Is that something that you notice, and is there a way that you can play it or react to it and take advantage of that at all? I don't know about necessarily taking advantage of it. It's just a, a thing that we're all trying to get used to, and... Um, I mean, it's like any week, you know, we're going to very rarely do you play back to back courses that are almost identical in terms of grasses and, and condition and whatnot. So we're all getting here, whether it be Sunday, today, tomorrow, and, and trying to get our feels of, of the greens, of the chipping, the whatever. And um, oh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. But it's just. Um, what, is your, what is your reaction, you know, in terms of playing a course like that that might be unusual in terms of what you would normally see throughout a full season? It, I mean, it's 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 just no different. It's, it's hard to explain. It's just, you know, we play different play, – like I said, we, we change week to week. I mean, you can, you can definitely tell, you know, it's probably three or four weeks away from being, like, really, really good. I mean, it's – the course is, is great. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, it's, it's Rochester, New York in May. Like, it, you can – I think it snowed, like, three weeks ago. So, it's – it's just the risk that that comes with it, but uh, and you'll have some some iffy areas around the greens, and you know some of the greens are, are you know maybe different than others if they're shaded or whatnot. But I mean, the course is really good, that's for sure. By the way, it did not snow three weeks ago, and anybody who lives here will vehemently fight you if anybody says otherwise. Just <laughs> really? Did not know. Okay, four, we've had a great winter. It was four weeks. Shush, ago. shush. Four. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, next, let's go. Mike eight followed by eighteen. 
Hey, Justin. Uh, by by nature, you're a very fiery guy, uh, even in, inside and outside. I'm just kind of curious how you manage uh, that with your as your frustration level was building when you when the results weren't coming and and uh, and how much of a challenge has that been in the last number of months when you haven't seen the results? It's very frustrating. It's especially. It's it's easy. It's it's a lot easier, like anything in golf. It's easier said than done in terms of thinking big picture, thinking process, thinking you know I'm going to be better off for this and whatnot. But at the end of the day, after a couple months or or six months, whatever it is, where you're not performing as well as you feel like you should, and not you know having the finishes you feel like you should, or not winning tournaments that you feel like you should, then it's yeah, it's pretty easy to get pissed off and, and understand what's going wrong. But. Um, like anything, and like I mean, I, I've, you know, I've preached this to myself. <laughs> I'm sure I've said it to y'all, or I've said it to whether it be, <clears throat> excuse me, younger guys that ask. And I mean, how you learn is is failure and negatives. And I feel like I've, you know, I've had a great opportunity for a lot of learning the past whatever six months, a couple months in this year. And um, you know, I feel like I'm. I said it in Charlotte a little bit, starting to see a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel and just of, of you know, no, nobody I feel like is in a better place than call it Max Home out here. There's there's not very many top player. There's no other top player in the world that's gone through what he's gone through in terms of of being having a tour, having a tour card, losing your tour card, having to earn it back and then becoming one of the top players in the world. So I've talked to him about it before because he's like, like nobody out here really knows how bad it can be, you know. It's like I feel like everything's so bad, and I'm ranked whatever in the world. He's like, dude, I, like I had to birdie my last five holes at Pumpkin Ridge to get in the Corn Ferry playoffs. So it's all relative, and it's just about making the most out of whatever situation you're in. If I could just follow quick on that, how much of a help? And I know you've been with him for a little while now, but how much of a help has Bones been with that f- for you? Because he's got such an even keel mm-hmm. manner about him. Yeah, he's very positive. He's very. Um, encouraging he's just he's someone that you know i i especially now he's not he's gotten to know me well enough he can tell when i'm upset or he can tell when i'm down on myself you know to kind of almost you know kind of put your arm on your back kind of thing and say you know everything's okay you're playing better than this or, or whatnot and that's uh that's it's hard to it's hard to have and uh, i'm very very lucky to have him by my side because he definitely makes things a lot easier and better for me Justin, I know you talked in Charlotte about just making the transition to aim point. Are you still using it, and mm-hmm. does it become more familiar as you go down the road? Yeah, I am still using it, and I've I've come to find just like anything in, in your golf game, uh, it feels great some days and it feels bad others. And, you know, I played Keegan's back home in, in Jupiter, and we played, and he just said, you know, I he had a week in Charlotte where he couldn't feel it very well. And I'm sure it's, you know, just like your golf swing. You're going to have days where you can feel the slope like this, and it's just bang, go. You're making everything, and you're going to have weeks where it's it's not great. Um, but just, again, like anything in your golf game, you got to practice it. So I felt like I had a good week practicing it and trying to get a little bit more accustomed to it and a little bit more, you know, fluid and just uh, making it easier routine-wise, I guess. All right, let's go to 13 followed by 15. Justin, going back to the, your previous comments about results and maybe not uh, what they want, what you want them to be, how do you define success and failure in this game, especially since it's not just one team versus the other, you're one at 56, and are those sentiments you have to kind of recalibrate throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, I guess in literal terms, you'd, I mean, it's, it's did you win the tournament or not? Um, it's it's unfortunate how it happens that way, and it's in reality that's not no how you should or, or how all of us base success and failure. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to win the golf tournament, and whether it's we backdoor to third place or we were tied with one hole left and made a bogey and finished third, we might be pleased somewhere in here with a third, but there's somewhere down there that's upset we didn't win. And I just think it's. Um, it's just kind of understanding where you're at at that time or in the golf tournament or in your game. And there's going to be weeks where seventh place finish is really good for what I have that week. But then there's going to be some weeks where, you know, maybe if I have a, a one shot lead and on number five on Sunday and I finish seventh, like that's not, those sevenths are very different. So it's just understanding, I think, 
the situation circumstances of that given day or week and basing it off that if you will Justin, where does your grit to hang in there last year Sunday come from? Where does the guts to go for the green and the playoff off the you know on a par four? Where does that come from? How did you develop that? I think the, I mean, a lot of it was probably I mean how, how I was raised in terms of the the grit and just in hard work, um, just to the inner belief and just to kind of never never quit, never give up. I mean, I, there were many times in junior golf where, like a lot of 8, 10-year-olds, I mean, you start sulking and, and pouting and kind of walking. I mean, you can see, you can even see players out here where it's, you know, you can tell when they've almost given up kind of thing. And that was just something that my parents instilled in me. Like, you, you know, you're not one of those kids. You know, you're not going to give up. You're not going to quit. Make the best out of whatever you have. There's going to be days, kind of like I was saying, where, you know, 70 might be the best that I have that day, but it's sure better than 71. Or 75 might be the best I have that day, but it's better than 76. And that's just kind of how I've always been taught. Um, in terms of the, like, 17 or whatever last year, I would just say that comes just with confidence and and trust in myself, honestly. I feel like getting in those situations is fun because – I, that's why I've practiced to where when I get out there, I don't think about anything but just executing that shot and in that specific time. And I have enough belief and faith and trust in myself that I'm going to be able to pull it off kind of thing. Can you give an example of how you uh, enjoyed having custody of the Wanamaker Trophy for the past year? Um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty fun. I went straight to uh, Colonial the next week and shared a house with kids and it just sat on the dining room table the entire week. Um, well, I shouldn't say entire week because I missed the cut. So, uh, <laughs> for five days, but, but then I, I wanted to go see my buddies at home in Louisville. So I took it home with me, uh, to Louisville and one of my buddies had a little house party and we filled it up with some beer and, and drank it. So it's, it's little stuff like that. That's fun. But unfortunately we've been going through a move and it hasn't been out and displayed. So, uh, hopefully we'll have one to bring home to display with them. Mike 14. A couple of them, JT. There's not another trophy you have to bring back, is there? Mm -mm. The ones you've won? Just the. I have, yeah, I got both. Well, they're replicas, though, right? Probably, yeah. You don't know this? I don't care, honestly. Okay. I got them both. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to follow up on, on your the way you measure um, success and how you go about that. Do you feel like you're in a slump? Right now, no. Uh, a couple weeks ago or a month ago, probably, yeah. Have you shown up at a tournament in the last year wondering whether you could win or thinking you couldn't? Yeah. What's that like? It sucks. It's, not good, yeah. it's terrible. I mean, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, I mean, how I described it for a couple months is I've never felt so far and so close at the same time. So that's, uh, it's a very hard thing to explain, and it's also a very hard way to try to compete and win a golf tournament. But you know, that's how you get out of it, just playing your way out of it and hitting those shots when you want to and making those putts when you need to, and then your confidence builds back up, and next thing you know, you don't even remember what you were thinking in those times. Great. We've got time for a couple more. Let's go Mike 10, followed by Mike 2. So, obviously, last year was a heartbreak for Mito, the way that the way that all played out at the end since, I don't know, if immediately after or maybe a few weeks later. Did you have a conversation at all with him about, Man, tough break. Sorry, that type of thing, or, or no? You just <laughs> no, no. I didn't. No, I don't really know him too well, but yeah, yeah. All right. Justin, can I just ask you two quick ones? One, can what happened at the PGA Championship last year translate to this year? And second, for the casual golf fan who might just watch the majors, what is the the best way for a, a layman to understand the aim point? Um, sorry, you said, uh, the first question you said, how can, can I translate? Can last year translate to this year? Um, not really. I mean, it just, it's so long ago in terms of your golf game that it's, the feelings can translate and, and the memories can translate. But, um, I mean, a lot of things and, and swings and putts and chips have happened since then. So that, that part doesn't really 
that part is hard to relate. Uh, in terms of explaining Aimpoint, I just would, it's, that's tough. I would just would say that it's, it's trying to get like in it, damn, this is hard. Uh, it's weird because it's a com it's a complex system that is very that makes reading greens very simple. Um, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but it's like when you're learning it, it sounds like, how am I going to be able to do this? I don't understand it. But then once you get it, and once you get it, anybody who does Aimpoint can tell you when you you have a planar putt, it doesn't matter if it's five feet, fifteen, or forty. Like if it's planar and you know the slope you're thinking I'm making this kind of thing because you have the read exactly. And um, everybody kind of perfects their own version of it. But it's just a way to try to simplify reading greens for me is how, um, how I've done. I feel like I didn't answer your question at all. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Justin, in, in hindsight, being that you're 10 years in the game, I can say you a vet now. Looking back, what would... JT 2023, what advice would he give JT 2013? That everything's not as big of a deal as you think it is. I think it's uh, everything always seems like the end of the world or you're playing bad. That round was so important. You know, you, you had to play well there. And it's just to just I feel like if I would have learned things a little bit sooner in, ter in terms of my bad rounds, my bad weeks, I feel like I would have been better off earlier, but it's just hard when you're 20, 21, 22 years old to not think that playing bad on a Sunday isn't the end of the world when it's not the end of the world. So uh, that's definitely what I would say. Great. Thanks for your time today, Justin. Thanks.